In this video, I'll be explaining CVRs. I'll go through the basics, why they're important, how to put a CVR together, but more importantly, I'll be explaining what I call the why and the action. So look out for that. Now this is by far the most requested topic that I've had since I started the channel. So I just had to do it. CVRs are an essential tool for successfully managing a construction project and they're commonly misunderstood. If you're a project manager, quantity surveyor, engineer or architect, then you're involved with managing construction projects and you need to understand these documents. Early in my career, when I worked for a contractor, I was responsible for compiling CVRs and they often felt like a dark art. But in reality, they're simple. A CVR is a document that reconciles value and cost to illustrate the profitability of a construction project. It is essentially the profit and loss statement of the project. There are three main headings in a CVR. Cost, which is essentially the expenses incurred in delivering a construction project. Value, which is the value of the work that's been undertaken, which is essentially revenue that can be recognized. And profit, which is the value less the cost. In addition to establishing profitability, CVRs also help the project team monitor and measure a project's performance. They can also be a vital tool to the company's management and the project team in establishing any issues that are required to be resolved. They're also included within a company's statutory accounts, and when CVRs are done properly, they can vastly improve the predictability of a construction project's financial outcome. It's normal for a construction company to have monthly reporting cycles, and each cycle has its own reporting date, which is more commonly known as the month end cutoff date. Value and cost is based on the work undertaken up to and including the month end cutoff date. There are three main sections of a CVR, which is the final position, the to date position, and the period position. When preparing CVRs, there are three overarching principles that need to be applied. The first is that they're prepared on the basis of when value is earned and cost is incurred, not when cash is received in or paid out. The second principle is that they're prepared using the prudence concept. Now this simply means that value should not be overstated and cost should not be understated. And the final principle is that when it comes to CVRs, it's all about the final position. So let's look at the final position. The value and cost in the final position needs to be based on the same scope of work, the same program, and over the same duration of the project. Now this is a fundamental point, and failure to do this will result in an inaccurate position. So let's take a look at value. In the context of CVRs, there are two terms that we need to understand before we go on. The first is external valuation, and the second is internal valuation. An external valuation is simply the application of a payment to the client, and the internal valuation is the result of applying the prudence concept to the external valuation. So put simply, once the value has been removed from the external valuation to ensure it's not overstated, what's left is the internal valuation. So when we're talking about value in the context of a CVR, we're always talking about the internal valuation. Once a construction project starts to change, the value of the work becomes less certain, which is why it's necessary to take a more cautious approach when it comes to recognizing value. When you're considering the value that you'll be including in your internal valuation, you should only include value that is reasonably assured. And what this means is that there's a high degree of confidence that it'll be agreed by the client. When you're preparing your internal valuation, there are three main items you might consider including. Measure, variations, and claims. If you're using an NEC contract, you'll be considering the items that comprise the price for work done to date. So let's go back to measure. If you're confident that the value of the measure will be agreed by the client and that it's not disputed, then you can include that value. When it comes to variations, again, it comes back to the likelihood that it'll be agreed by the client. 
So if the client has already agreed to a, the sum of a variation, that can be included. If they've agreed to a variation in principle, so they agree that it is actually a variation, then you could include a prudent assessment of that variation. But if they've rejected one, the value should not be included. Now, when it comes to claims, these are far more contentious items, such as delay and disruption claims, and it wouldn't be uncommon for construction companies not to include value for these items until it's agreed finally. Some of the examples that I've given you for what you might consider for your internal valuation reflect a more traditional form of contract, but in your contract you may have an activity schedule or you may be working with a cost reimbursable contract, so you'll need to recognise your value in a different way. With that said, as long as you're applying the prudence concept to how you're recognising your value, you won't go far wrong. When you're preparing your internal valuation, there are other items that you need to consider. Retention would be an obvious one. Now this should largely be ignored when preparing your CVR, unless the client is likely to retain the retention sum. Bonuses is another item. Bonuses aren't typically recognised within a CVR until they've been achieved and agreed. If you're working under a cost reimbursable contract that has a target cost, the gain share component wouldn't normally be recognised until it's been realised and agreed. And finally, liquidated damages. These should largely be ignored unless the client is likely to apply them. There may be more items to consider when preparing your internal valuation than the ones I've already given you, but as long as you're applying the prudence concept, you should be able to achieve a position that you can report with confidence. It's really important to stick to this method of recognising value. I know that it can be tempting when you're working on a construction project and profit margins start to reduce or worse turn to a loss to start being more optimistic or less prudent when it comes to value recognition. But reporting construction projects in this way has led to the sudden demise of significant construction companies and it should be avoided. There may be some that you work with on your construction project that perceive the reported outcome as too pessimistic. But you can also include within your CVR a scenario management section, which essentially means you can include a best case scenario, a most likely, and a worst case scenario alongside your reported position. This allows other members of the construction team and your senior management to see the potential outcomes of the project alongside the reported position. If you'd like me to do a video on how to prepare a CVR for an example construction project, let me know in the comments. So let's move on to cost. The cost in the final position need to include the total cost for delivering the project and it needs to be as accurate as possible. If the project has already started, the final cost is the cost to date plus the forecast cost to go. Which may sound obvious, but I have seen it where the final cost has been entirely estimated without recognising the costs that have been incurred to date. Now this approach is flawed and unnecessary. The cost to date, if it's accurate, represents a known and the only cost that needs estimating is the cost beyond this point. So the cost in the final position naturally gets more accurate as the project progresses because a larger proportion of it has been realised and the amount that needs estimating gets less. When you're preparing your final cost, you, there are other things you need to consider. Things like the cost of rectifying defects, contra charges from the client. Now these should be recognised as a cost not reductions to value. Also, you'll need to include perhaps contingency sums and risk allowances. The reconciliation part of a CVR is what puts the R in CVR, and it's essentially the comparison between the value and the cost. Now, if this generates a positive figure, it's known as profit. If it generates a negative figure, it's known as a loss. So let's move on to the to date position and I want to start with cost. When you're preparing your cost to date, you'll likely be starting with a cost report from an accounting system. If your project has not yet completed, the cost report is unlikely to include all of the costs up to the month end cutoff date and therefore you'll need to include accruals to ensure that the costs included within your CVR are complete. An accrual is a provision for a cost that has been incurred but has not yet been invoiced or doesn't feature in the cost report. For example, 
A cost report that's been extracted from the accounting system may not include the final week of labour, because it may not be up to date. And if this is the case, it would be necessary to include an accrual for the final week of labour to ensure the labour cost is complete up to and including the month end cutoff date. Construction costs can be typically categorised into the following expenditure types, which are staff, labour, plant, materials, subcontractors and indirect costs such as professional fees or temporary works. Now the subcontractor cost expenditure category is typically comprised of subcontractor liabilities. A subcontractor liability is the cumulative assessment of the amount due to the subcontractor under the terms of his contract up to the cutoff date. One item that needs consideration when you're preparing your costs to date is the cost of unfixed materials. Some companies, they choose to exclude the cost of unfixed materials and instead transfer them to the balance sheet. The logic behind this is it allows the company to report the financial liability within their accounts and at the same time, the cost of the unfixed material is not distorting the CVR. The value in the to date position is typically calculated using two methods, input and output. The input method takes the cost to date divides it by the total final cost, and this gives you the completion percentage. The total final value is then multiplied by the completion percentage to give you the value to date. The input method is simple, requires less effort, and ultimately provides a more consistent reported position throughout the duration of the construction project. So for example, if the profit was 8% in the final position, using the input method, it would calculate a profit of 8% in the to date position. This is what I mean by consistent reporting. One of the three principles that I talked about early in the video was that it was all about the final position. And the calculation for the input method is a great example of this. The accuracy of the final position directly influences the amount of value that's recognized in the to date position and subsequently the amount of profit and loss that is also reported. The output method is a more traditional approach to recognizing value and it reflects the same approach that we took in the final position. So we would typically start with the application for payment, which we know is the external valuation, and we would make the appropriate adjustments. The value in the to date position is being recognized on the output, which is the work achieved, rather than the input, which is the cost. When using this method, it's important to consider undermeasure and overmeasure. Undermeasure is the amount that needs to be added to the application for payment when the valuation date for the application is earlier than the month end cutoff. An overmeasure is the amount that needs to be deducted from the application for payment when the valuation date from the application is later than the month end cutoff. Now what we're trying to do here is make sure that the starting position reflects the external valuation up to and including the month end cutoff date. It's also important to consider items such as front loaded preliminary items and early milestone payments as these don't accurately reflect the value of the work that's been undertaken and as such they should be treated in the same way as overmeasure. Remember that value in a CVR is recognized based on the work that's been achieved in a given period of time, not the cash that's received. There are two other items that I want to mention in the context of preparing your value to date, which are advanced payments and retention. Advanced payments should be ignored in the context of recognizing value to date as they don't represent the value of work that's done. It's just a mechanism for aiding the contractor's cash flow. Retention is a form of security in the way of cash that the client withholds until the retention is due for release. So retention should be ignored in the CVR unless it's likely that the client is going to retain it. If you're enjoying the video, and you feel it's adding some value, please help us out by hitting the thumbs up button just to let YouTube know you're enjoying the content. So let's move on to profit. We know that the profit to date is simply the value to date less the cost to date. Now some construction companies elect not to recognize any profit in the early stages of a construction project because it might be said that the final position at that stage cannot be reasonably determined and it wouldn't be uncommon for no profit to be recognized until a project has achieved 20% progress. 
This can be extended if the final position, even at that stage, still cannot be reasonably determined. It's also common for future losses to be recognized immediately. If in the preparation of the final position, losses are determined, then these should be recognized in the today position rather than that loss continuing over the course of the project, distorting the actual performance. If you are using the output method to recognize the value in your to date position, it's entirely possible that the profit percentage could be higher than in the final position. If this happens, then you need to reduce the profit percentage in the to date position as a minimum to the profit percentage in the final position. If the project is performing better in the to date position, it suggests that there are future losses to come. And as we've already discussed, future losses need to be recognized immediately rather than over the course of the project. So I've covered the final position and the to date position. So let's look at the period position. Now this is simply the difference between the cost to date and the previous cost to date and the difference between the value to date and the previous value to date. Now the profit in the period is simply the difference in value less the difference in cost which will give you the period profit. It's tempting to analyze the period position as if it's an accurate reflection of the financial performance in the period, but this needs to be done with caution. The period position is simply the difference in the to date position this month when compared to the previous month. So there are many things that can affect the position that's been reported now, such as changes in the final position. We already know that this can reflect how value is recognized. So this can affect the period position. It is possible to analyze the underlying performance of the period position, provided that any items that are distorting it are removed. Now, if you can do this properly, this will provide really useful information. At the start of the video, I refer to what I call the why and the action. You may understand the basics of a CVR. You may also understand how to prepare a CVR, but you also need to understand why the reported position is what it is. This is what I mean by the why. You need to be able to explain to the management, your boss, client, or whoever, why the reported position is what it is. If the project is making a profit, this indicates that it's performing within the financial plan, which might be the tender or the project budget. But why is it making a profit? Should it be making more profit? Is the profit less than what it should be because there's an issue that needs to be addressed? It's tempting not to look at a CVR in any great depth when it's reporting a profit, but in my opinion, it should still command the appropriate amount of scrutiny. To understand the why, you need to analyze the financial performance of the project by comparing cost and value in greater detail. Project value and cost is typically split into a work breakdown structure, or WBS. I'm not gonna go into WBS in any great detail in this video, but put simply, it's a method of breaking a project down into simpler elements, tasks, and subtasks to facilitate the planning, management, and reporting of a project. If your project has a WBS, you can start by analyzing each section of the WBS. This will enable you to identify any well-performing or poorly performing sections. The level beneath this would be to review the cost heads of staff, labor, plants, materials, and subcontractors. If you can split your net value by these same cost heads, it will allow you to compare cost and value at components level. It can be a good idea to hold weekly cost meetings to monitor the performance of the work as it progresses, as early identification of any issues can help mitigate cost and delays. To understand the financial performance, it's also necessary to review the daily records, updates to the program, client changes, subcontractor changes, and any risk events that have occurred. This will help you understand the why. The financial performance that is being reported is what it is because of what's happening on the project. This is where you need to be aiming to be. So let's talk about what I called the action. The action follows the why. Once you understand the why, you're informed. You've got your finger on the pulse and you've put yourself in a position where you can give reasoned advice and make recommendations. 
This is what I mean by the action. It's the action that we can take because we understand the why. So let's have a look at an example of the action. So during your analysis, you identified that the outputs that were being achieved by one of the operations, such as Earthworks, were lower than the outputs that were allowed for in the budget or that were needed to finish the project on time. Now, you may recommend in this case that resources be increased to finish the work earlier and save on time-related costs. It may be that you've identified that the cost of imported aggregate is exceeding the budget allowance and it may be in that case that you suggest the processing of excavated material in order to save cost. Whatever it is, once you understand the why, you've put yourself in the position to give that reasoned advice and make recommendations. If you prepare your CVRs differently to how I've explained in the video, please let me know in the comments. It'd be great to learn how you do yours. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video about CVRs and I hope it's added some value. If you feel it has, please consider subscribing and if you do, please remember to hit the bell so you get the notification when we release our new content. Thank you for watching, it's been great to have you, this has been Construct Academy.